hopefully these are adorable. I think they're going to be. Like that. I think so. Yeah, that worked. It's gonna make a lot of little ducky cookies. Oh, that little duck's head is broken, kind of. Hi everyone and welcome back. We are at week 14 of the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. This menu that we'll be recreating today, I believe is probably their Easter dinner menu. Now the Easter dinner menu that they have is not something that I would associate Easter with. I don't know about you or any of your traditions, but this is not something I traditionally make in my house. Here is what's on the menu today. We are back to starting off our meals with a soup and we're starting with cream of asparagus soup. Then for our main course, we move on to veal purds and this will be our second time making them. Served with that is celery and olives, also riced potatoes, string beans, whatever an Easter salad is. And for dessert, we have April Fool eggs, and sweet bunnies, which we will be making a little bit of an alteration to. And of course, we always have coffee. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. My name is Ashley. I'm a registered dietitian and I love everything vintage. I'm taking those two things, food and vintage, and I'm recreating almost all of the recipes in order in this book. This is the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. If you'd like to know a little bit more, you can refer back to week one where I give a little bit of a more thorough explanation. Now let's head into the kitchen and get this dinner started. If you watched last week's video, you know that I have saved these ends and we'll go ahead and they've been washed. We'll go ahead and scrape them, but I'm not sure. I, we talked about this last week as well, I believe with this asparagus and with one of the other recipes it doesn't say how much it says it wants it in three to four inch strips and that we should cook it in boiling a quart of boiling water but it doesn't say how much of these ends we're supposed to use so i guess maybe i'll do about double whoop, there's one on the floor double what i have here i have some more asparagus and i don't know if it's in the shot or not but We'll, we'll maybe double this much and hopefully that's the correct amount, but uh, we'll see how it tastes in the soup in the end. We established a while before that, sorry, hold on. I have a robot vacuum cleaner and he's very noisy. We established before that scraping celery is essentially peeling it, getting the, the strings out of it. But I don't know, I've never noticed asparagus having strings and I'm kind of starting from the bottom and peeling it a little bit peeling it back on the woody ends here but it it just doesn't seem like there's much to take out now maybe that's because of modern growing practices and changes in asparagus maybe in the 1920s 100 years ago this asparagus would have been much uh, more difficult to work with. The texture would have been uh, more stringy, more chewy, and now it's much more tender. Maybe it's when we're picking it. I'm, I'm not really sure, but scraping it there, other than peeling off this outside, there isn't much to scrape. So I think, I guess I'll just keep kind of going here and taking off the ends a little bit and maybe that'll help tenderize it a little bit. But other than that, I don't think there is like, I can chew right through that, no strings. I don't think there's much scraping to do. We have a little bit of a snafu here. Our recipe calls for three cups of the asparagus water. However, after boiling for 30 minutes with a quart of water, which is four cups, uh, we are only left with uh, about a cup and a half of water here. I'm hoping maybe this is just really concentrated. I'll add another cup and a half of water to this and hopefully it doesn't dilute the flavor that was intended, but that's the only solution I have at the moment on what to do with this. I'm curious to see how the stocks will go through this sieve, if it'll 
actually break down enough to get through there or if we're gonna have to, I don't know what else we would do, but it seems to be kind of just flattening a little bit, but not really breaking through. Maybe we need to add a bit more. There is a little tiny bit. I don't know if you can see that because there's not a lot. There's little tiny amounts coming out through there, but not much. May have to do some water dipping or something to get those pieces out. It's occurring to me that maybe this is why we were supposed to scrape all the outside because the inside is the guts of what should be coming out of here. And I switched from that little wooden spoon to uh, my big stone pestle. I think this is the pestle part or is this the mortar? No, this is the pestle. The big stone pestle and it's squishing a little more but honestly not, not a ton more is coming out except liquid. So maybe some of that three cups of liquid, um, the one and a half cups that we're missing, maybe a little of it will come out in all of this, but there isn't much coming out as far as puree goes here. There, there still is very little puree that came out of there. I'm not sure, more of the liquid came out than anything. There was a little bit of puree, but not much. So I added another like cup and a quarter of water to this. We'll go ahead and add our scalded milk and our onion juice. Let that heat up a little while and then we'll thicken it. Yeah, you know, we talked about this with the asparagus in not knowing how much to use or how much of some of the ingredients. For this one as well, we don't know how many potatoes we are supposed to use for this. Maybe they would have known back in the day. They do tell us how many hard boiled eggs to use, but not how many potatoes. So I have left over, I think six this size potatoes and they're starting to sprout a bit. So we're gonna go ahead and just use all of them up and so that none of them go to waste. And hopefully six is the correct amount of potatoes to use for this recipe. I have my ricer here. I don't know if I've used this in any of the videos before, but I got this the first time that Nani and I went and took that cooking course in Italy together, which was 11 years ago. And I've had this ricer ever since. So I'm just putting my, oh, that's so noisy, potatoes in there and squishing them out. It's cool texture. All right, now let's see the egg yolks. I have duck egg yolks again, so maybe a little, it's two egg yolks, but it's probably closer to three or four. They're kind of cute over top. I don't know, I assume this is just to add color and not flavor here, but it is rather adorable. And we'll get it in the oven to warm. cream sauce we made yesterday and it's not super thin it's a lot thicker than I expected it to be but we're just gonna turn over these green beans the we did not use canned obviously you saw that we used fresh and boiled them here we go for these sweet bunnies First of all, um, I am sure that I have a bunny cookie cutter somewhere, but we're gonna do sweet duckies instead because I do have a ducky cookie, cookie, ducky cookie cutter. <laughs> and I, you know, we have a little duck love going on over here in my kitchen. So we're going with the ducks. Also, for those of you who have seen more than one or two of my videos, more recent videos, you know I can't do gluten at the moment. However, the some of these recipes, the baking recipes that we've done, have not turned out well. So 
What I'd like to do for this one instead is I'd like to do it as it was intended with regular white flour. I'll have some other people. I don't believe I have anybody for on camera trying, but I will give these out to some friends, some neighbors, see what they think of them, and I will let you know what they think. And then that way, if this recipe is good, if it turns out okay, if I don't screw it up somehow and it turns out okay, then we'll know that maybe we can try it with the gluten-free flour. But I don't want to start out the first time with a cookie recipe with the gluten-free flour just in case this recipe is terrible anyway. And I, I don't think I have, my, my baking skills have improved, but not enough to look at a recipe and determine whether it might work or not. So let's get started here. I also am going to, I think, try with a lot of these recipes. I've been using an electric mixer, a hand mixer, and I, I know they wouldn't really have been using these then. So I'm gonna try, I think, moving forward to rely on that a little less and start using maybe some wooden spoons and whisks and things a little bit more. I do have a hand mixer that is a manual hand mixer that goes to a Delphite glass and I have not, I guess, talked myself into actually using that instead of just displaying it. So maybe we'll see in the future if I decide to break it out and try it, maybe for some whipped cream or something. This consistency here is why I wanted to make sure that I used regular flour first because as we have seen, these recipes just don't really work most of the time with the baking. And there, I sifted the flour beforehand. We added all of the ingredients in the correct ratios as far as I'm aware. And there is zero chance we are rolling this sucker out. So, I can do two things. I can either make drop cookies out of this and try it out that way, or we can keep adding more flour until it becomes the consistency of a regular cookie. However, I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to recreate it as it was written I'm a little torn here on what to do. Let me think about it. Looking over the recipe again, it does say at the end to continue adding flour until it reaches the desired consistency. It seems like we'll probably have to add a lot. And actually, let me measure out how much I put in here so that you know. This is just about a third of a cup. I've sifted more. And my house is, it is not humid here today. My house is exceptionally dry, so it's not due to humidity, in case you were wondering if that was a factor. Two thirds, three thirds, or one cup. Still pretty sticky, but on our way. Maybe this last third will do it. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe we need a little more. The inside is still sticky. Oh yeah, definitely need more. I've added a total of three and a half more cups and it's still slightly sticky. So I have a good bit of flour down here on the countertop. It is exceptionally tempting to not eat this cookie dough. It does feel very soft now that I've added all of that extra flour. Actually, let's cut this in half. Um, and I'm not going to eat the cookie dough, but I will tell you that I want to. <laughs> Previous to this, I don't know that I have ever, when I have baked something or been with someone that was baking something sweet like cookies or brownies or cake, um, I don't recall a time where I didn't eat the dough, even when I probably uh, shouldn't have, like maybe it was in a class or something or 
it was at someone's home who does not approve of eating the dough or licking the spoon. I probably still did it anyway. Um, so it is a, it's a hard habit to break, my friends. And I'm not sure exactly how thin this actually this seems to be rolling out better than I expected. I'm not sure how thin we are to roll this, but this seems rather thin enough. We'll maybe we'll do one more. I'll flip and pass. Ah! Oh no! There's a hole. We'll fix it. We have our adorable little ducky here. And I'm not really a super fan of putting cloves in their eyes, but I'm not the one that's going to be eating these. So all of the people who are trying them out, you guys can have the, the cloves in the eyes. <laughs> I'm never, when I'm putting this down, I'm not sure how, wait, like exactly where the duck shape is, even though I, I probably should know, because I have, done it several times. I can look at it like this, but as soon as I put it back down, I have no idea which way the deck went. I, my spatial reasoning is not great. So it's always just a huge surprise when I pick this up, which way the duck is going. Okay. We're going to see how this one goes. For a smooth white icing, they don't leave a recipe. I'm going to do milk and powdered sugar. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, a little vanilla. Hold on. So we'll do a little vanilla, a little milk, and hopefully that is smooth and white enough for this icing. I have a few whole cloves for eyes for our little duckies so that they can watch us eat them. I don't think it's gonna look pretty. If I get this icing smooth, I imagine it's a, uh, just kind of gonna slide everywhere. Maybe I need to thicken it. Well, it's also not that smooth. I didn't sift this sugar before I mixed it all up. I should have done that too. Eh. All right, I added a lot more powdered sugar to thicken this up and let's get these duckies iced. strange looking eye. I'm very glad we, th ah! oh boy. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm very glad we thickened up this icing because it's so much easier to work with now and much less messy. But, um, well, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut now. <laughs> Do you feel like it's Christmas time and you're doing a fun activity with your four-year-old, letting them ice the cookies? Because I feel like a four-year-old would do better at icing cookies than I'm doing right now. <laughs> hmm. This recipe for our Easter salad is another one that's a little bit confusing to me, the way it's written. I don't know if we, well first, I'm not sure what type of cheese, maybe they only had a few different types of cheese available at the time. So grated cheese was just one kind of grated cheese. And maybe the grated cheese, the type is up to you. I chose cheddar. I thought cheddar would be the right, I guess, <laughs> move for this recipe or what it seemed like to me. Right now I have all the ingredients except the egg white mixed up in here. And the other thing, I guess looking at it, uh, to fry it in deep fat, I assume it means to like, like make the fat deep, not that 
deep fat is a type of fat. I'm sure that's very obvious, but just, just in case it's not to someone out there, including myself, it feels obvious, but I, I still feel like I could be wrong. And then at the end, it says to put two eggs on top as a serving. Now, are they calling the little balls that were rolling eggs? Or are we to add two eggs on top of the salad, which doesn't make sense to me. The proportions of that seem quite off. But who knows at this point, some of these recipes are a good bit off. But either way, um, it seems like maybe two eggs aren't going to be, or two beaten egg whites aren't going to be quite enough for this, I guess, to bind this up. But let's find out. Obviously, you can see this is not nearly enough. Now, maybe I didn't beat those egg whites enough. I chose to, instead of using the electric mixer where I normally would, I beat them with a fork for a while, but I just don't think, and I'm using gluten-free flour again, in case you're wondering. Yeah, that there is no way it is not gonna hold together for these balls. So I guess, We'll alter this recipe a little bit and add some more egg whites to it. Okay, I have my second egg white and the eggs I'm using, the egg whites I'm using for this are duck eggs. So they're a little bigger than a regular egg white. So I'm surprised that this just doesn't seem to be enough. I'm thinking we're gonna need one more. I think this will be the last egg white. balls the size of English walnuts mm, I don't know we might still need one more this is frustrating well maybe not let's see all right there we go well let's get a whole bunch of these made and then we'll fry them in deep fat here's how many little eggs or walnuts or balls that this made and this is what's left inside of there that's still very crumbly i think what i might do with the rest of this if the balls taste good maybe i'll just add whip up a few eggs whole eggs or something and make a frittata or something out of this or scramble this into eggs i don't know we'll figure it out i don't know if this is deep enough Maybe it was supposed to cover, but we can flip. Our bed or nest of shredded lettuce is here. We have our mayonnaise and we'll put, I assume two of these is what the portion is, that these are eggs, and maybe we're supposed to stick it on the mayonnaise to make it stick to the lettuce, like this. There we are. Hmm. Just seems like a strange combination, but maybe it'll be delicious. For our April Fool's egg, I'm not sure what the April Fool part of it is, what the trickster part, maybe that we're hiding the uh, whipped cream under there, but we have our whipped cream here, we have our little thin slice of sponge cake, and we have our peaches. With the cake, obviously it's something I can't eat at the moment because I did not make a gluten-free option, I, but... I wanted to make it this way. Oh, maybe I gave a little bit too big of a dollop. It's not so much of a, a surprise there, but this is what it looks like. And maybe if you make it at home, yours is a little prettier. Since I can't eat the one with the sponge cake, I'm going to go ahead and just omit the cake for my serving. And I'll just do a little bit of whipped cream and the peach on top. Again, I thought I used less whipped cream that time, but I did not. It's still kind of smearing out there. Actually, it kind of looks like 
a butt. This peach got cut in half and now it kind of looks like a butt there. Any kid that got this would think it was hilarious, I imagine. It would be a great April Fool's joke for them, this one here. Uh, <laughs> but this is gonna be my serving and the other one is just so that you can see what it looks like. Last time that we made the veal birds, I don't remember how many weeks ago, but we noticed that there wasn't a lot of flavor to them. And we talked about how they probably, veal isn't a strong flavor and they probably needed more seasoning in not only the stuffing, but also maybe in the flour as well. And several of you suggested browning them on the outside a little bit longer to get that uh, extra flavor of the browning. So I have gone ahead and to our flour, we're using that Namaste gluten-free flour again. I've added the salt and pepper, but I've also added some garlic, some onion, a little bit of paprika, and um, a general steak kind of seasoning. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this out a little bit and then we'll get it rubbed up. Did I just say rubbed up? I meant rolled up. I think this is pretty thin enough. And we, I believe we overstuffed last time, so we're gonna try hard not to do that again, but no guarantees. I tend to always overstuff everything that I make. If I make burritos on my own, there is never a chance that it's going to be rolled up in a manner that is not excessively messy. All right, not too bad. everything all browned up. Let's put our milk in. And water. And have some butter that will melt in there. And we'll cover this and get it baking. We are finally ready to eat. We're starting with our asparagus soup, but again, I just wanna show off my tablecloth a little bit before we do. This is another one that I picked up at a thrift shop in Italy, and I do believe the, the apron I was wearing today also came from that thrift store in Italy. But let's try this soup and see how it turned out. Now, my, my hopes for the soup aren't super high because we didn't get a lot of the asparagus puree that I was hoping we would get out of that asparagus. So I'm not sure how strong of an asparagus flavor we're going to get. Yeah, honestly, it, it really just tastes like cream or milk. I don't smell much asparagus in this at all. I do taste it though, actually. I taste more than I thought I would, but it's still kind of, it's more subtle than I thought it would be. It's delicious. It's very good. It's thinner, I think, than I expected, but that's on my end. I could have thickened it more. But I expected it to be greener, more asparagus-y, but overall, the result of this, while different than what I expected, is still very, very good. I didn't add any croutons or crackers to it. 
I do have these gluten-free, these were those um, almond, almond mills, I think is the brand. I could be wrong on the, Simple Mills, that's it. Simple Mills brand tomato, basil, gluten-free crackers that Nani and I tried and said would be good as a crouton on a salad or in a soup. So let's try it with this. I was right, it is very good in the soup. However, the flavor of that cracker in particular is very bold where the, the flavor of the soup is a little more subtle. So you really only taste the cracker. You don't taste like the, the greenness of the soup that you do if you just eat it on its own. On the menu in between here, we do have the celery and the olives. I skipped over those this time for myself because there's a lot of food here to eat. And I think that will just be a little bit too much by the time we get to the end for me. I know celery and olives don't take up much, but I'm gonna pretend that we have cleansed our palate and those are kind of the flavors I have in my mouth right now as I'm moving on to this main course. With the potatoes, I did take some of the yolk as well. I don't know if it's just for color, but I would like to try and see if there is a difference for me in flavor or in texture adding those egg yolks to the potatoes. Also, with the veal this time, uh, the last time we made veal birds, I did try to include the little feet and almost took a tooth out. So we left the feet off this time as it is optional, but I did season it a good bit more. And I believe I browned it on all sides a little bit more than I did the last time based on your guys's advice. I don't remember what it tasted like last time. I think it was a little, I remember it being a little bit, uh, more subtle, not having a ton of flavor, but let's see what it tastes like this time. Oh, it smells phenomenal. I smell the garlic, the onion, this, the breadcrumbs that I used, I believe had some pecorino cheese in there. It smells wonderful. It does not smell bland at all. It tastes good. The texture is very nice. I do believe, I know veal is supposed to be more of a delicacy. I think I'm still just a fan of beef. Maybe that's because it's uh, maybe what I'm used to or because of culturally, that's, that's what I've been served in my area more often. But I've also been served a lot of chicken and pork and I really don't love chicken and pork that much. And I really love a good steak, but uh, the veal, it's, it's good. And it's better, I believe, than last time. There's a lot more flavor in it, but the, the flavor of the meat doesn't come through as much. It's more the flavor of the seasonings that I don't know that it's complementing the meat as much as it's providing all of the flavor and the meat is kind of the vehicle for that. The texture is very good. It's a good source of protein, so I'm happy about that, but... Um, yeah, veal, I don't, for me, I don't think veal is worth the price that it costs. I would much rather spend a little bit less money and just have beef, regular old beef instead. Now let's go in with the potatoes. I think it's a just a fun departure. We're having regular potatoes again, except we've changed the texture up a little bit. And I think that's pretty fun. And we've added a little bit of color and egg yolk, some fat in there that way. It doesn't smell like much except a potato. That's interesting. The Because we left them in the oven to stay hot as it directed, the egg yolks really hardened up. They're very firm, almost on their way to crunchy. They become dehydrated in the oven. There really wasn't, I guess, except some of the moisture from the potatoes, there wasn't a lot of moisture for those uh, egg yolks to absorb. So what it's done is really kind of just given us these little <laughs> tubes of, well, I guess they're not hollow. It's just given us little tiny pieces of almost dehydrated egg yolk on top of the potatoes. And I'd say for the color is nice, it's pretty, but the texture of it, I I might leave it off next time or I might mix these all together and have the yolk kind of yellow throughout instead of on top and that way it would keep the yolk moist and make it less dry 
and the potatoes maybe, they, it would offset that texture a little bit. And now for the green beans, I believe we've had these a few times already. If not, we've had all of our vegetables with the same cream sauce. And I, I feel bad for these green beans and for the women a little bit. They, they could have made these vegetables a lot better with a lot less work and a little bit less cost if they would have just left the cream sauce off. Why not just have the, the string beans on their own without the cream sauce? But I know at this time they were trying to create sort of an, an air of wealth or, you know, having, having more and creating something a little more decadent. And maybe that was why there's cream sauce on everything, or maybe they're just used to it. I don't know. But either way, let's try these out. It's good. I think it would have been better, as I said, just on its own without the cream sauce, but it's still good. And I think this combination, meat, potato, vegetable, very, I don't know about in some of the other countries, but that's a, a very American staple meal, a meat, potato, and a vegetable. Now, let's try that salad. Our salad course seems, again, a little bit strange to me, as many of the salads so far have. I really like burnt cheese. Like when you have pizza and if you're making a pizza and off to the side or grilled cheese, off to the side, some cheese oozes out and kind of burns there. That is the best part. So I think I'm going to like this part. Now I'm, I don't know. Now I'm like trying to poke it. It seems a little hard. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat it with a fork because I don't think I'm going to be able to cut through it. And now I'm thinking about, well, <laughs> I left the, the macaroni, little elbow macaronis off of the veal birds so that I don't crack my tooth, but uh, I have a feeling this might do it. Okay. I smell the mayonnaise and the, the iceberg lettuce. I really don't smell the cheese as strong as I thought I would in these. Let's give it a try. That's too much mayonnaise on there. Let's, okay. Scrape it off and get that lettuce on there a little. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I think maybe this is one they didn't test out before, or maybe I did something wrong here, but it's the, the texture, the flavor is okay. It's the texture, like it, it is so hard and stale. It, it feels like you took some bread and compressed a whole loaf of bread into a cube and then you left it to get stale. It, the, it just like my, it cut my mouth inside trying to chew through it. I don't know if I, I'm wondering, can we cut through it? Nope, it's, it's just creating a bunch of crumbs all over the place when we're cutting through it. And the flavors of the mayonnaise and the lettuce don't really go together with it. It just, I'm gonna say, there's a reason I've never seen this again, I think, and I don't know if anybody else, any of you seen this before, are familiar with this? If so, do, do you remember enjoying eating it? Because I mostly now just kind of wanna go to the dentist. <laughs> hmm. All right. Now for our dessert. I showed you our little, did I show you our bunnies, the finished product? I'm not sure, hold on. In case I forgot to include a shot, I will go ahead and grab those little bunnies now. I'll show you what they look like, and then we'll try our peach with whipped cream. By bunnies, I obviously meant ducks. This is my finished product of our sweet bunnies, or sweet ducks, and I, <laughs> I don't know, he's not very cute. 
I'm going to try to get some opinions outside of myself because I can't eat that, but we'll see what some other people think. And let's try out our peach. I don't think you can really go wrong with peaches and whipped cream unless you hate peaches or whipped cream, in which case you will hate this, but mm. smells good. I can smell both the peaches and the cream. I think that's a, it's a classic flavor, peaches and cream, and it would be delicious on top of a sponge cake. If I pretend, if I imagine the sponge cake is here and I pretend that I'm eating it with this, I can imagine and give you my pretend review that it also was delicious. Overall, I liked this menu. I think it meshed well together. I think a lot of it was pretty cohesive. Now the salad I thought was a little bit questionable, but other than that, I think everything else went together pretty well. Now, I don't associate any of these things with Easter for me, maybe the asparagus a little bit, but nothing else really says Easter to me, but that might not be the case for some other people who are watching this. Nutrition-wise, I like this menu as well. We had a nice source of protein and a good amount and variety of different fruits and vegetables. And those fruits and vegetables were a good mix of canned, fresh, cooked, and raw. Budget-wise, this one came in a little less than I expected. Looking at the veal, knowing that our main course was veal birds, I expected this to be a lot more expensive. For six people, the veal in itself was a little over $30, maybe 30 to 35. And I don't know if that is normal where you guys are at, if you have similar veal prices, but after the veal, everything else was pretty inexpensive. I'd say the next most expensive thing we had was the asparagus and that was only the woody ends of last week. So I suppose we could call it free if we were reusing the ends from a different recipe. So total, I think for six people, we're looking at around $50 for this menu. I'm so glad that you joined us today. If you liked what you saw, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel so that you never miss a Sunday dinner. Join us next week where we have stuffed shad and dandelion salad. Bye. See if we can get us some fish. Ah, uh, keep the head, please. Thank you. It's gonna have uh, eggs in it too. You're gonna keep those? Sure. Yeah, all right. Shad rope, very popular.